This is an Icon Ministry production with the support of our ministry partners and donors. Today we make ready the way of the Lord in our hearts. That's what Lent is, really. It's a time where we take from our hearts the things that get between us and God. We don't give up things for no reason. You don't give up chocolate for no reason. We remove things from our lives because we slowly, unintentionally allow them to become more important than God. And that's just half the battle, though. Once we do that, we create a space that belongs to God and we let God fill it. Our hearts were created by God, for God. And that's the reason we remember that. And, you know, my own personal faith is very influenced by Benedictine spirituality. My master's degree comes from a Benedictine institution. And I love the steady disposition with which monks and sisters pray. They pray every day. Six times a day, the bells ring and they stop and pray. You and I are not monks. No bells are going to ring. But we have a glorious opportunity. Holy Week is basically the greatest story ever told, laid out for us like a retreat, you know. We pray this today to make ready the way of the Lord in our hearts. And then we join in the passion of Christ as a community of faith, living and being who God calls us to be. I love that our faith is a communal faith. God in its in his very existence is a community. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is a community. He is a community and he created us to be in union, communion with himself. That's the essence of our faith. It's so powerful. When people say to me, I believe in God. I just don't feel like I, why would I have to go to church? Oh, it's a dangerous way to live and it's a dangerous thing to believe. We find our faith in community. Listen, we were made for each other. We were made for one another. Turn on a TV commercial and what are they selling you? They're selling you community, right? A soft drink commercial, you see a bunch of people around a fire, drinking a soft drink, laughing, joking, having a good time. They're not selling you a drink. They're selling you community. What's a, how does a university advertise, right? They've got a bunch of kids laying on the grass in a circle, laughing with their computers. They're not selling education. They're selling community. They're selling, come be a part of this because we were made to desire something. And Holy Week is a per- perfect time to recognize that what we desire is union, communion with God and his faithful, each other, the body of Christ. There's a great theologian, Servius Pincares, French theologian that said, true community will always lead us to God. True community leads us to God. True community helps us to see who we are and whose we are and how we were made to be a reflection of God in everything we do. That's the purpose of Lent. The purpose of Lent is that we allow God to be more in us so we become a little more a reflection of who God is in a world that is desperate to know the love and the hope and the faith and the joy that you and I know. So we pray today for that. And I encourage you, maybe you had a beautiful 
meaningful Lent. Maybe you had the worst Lent you've ever had. You, you, you said you were going to do all these things, and then, then three days later you didn't do them, and you forgot until now. Um, and you know what? You can have a great Lent in one day when you need to. And maybe this is that day that we turn and say, Lord, help us to see you and know you. Let us see your face in our hearts. We prepare a place. Come bring this world your mercy and grace and ready the way for the Lord. Ready the way Ready the way, ready the way of the Lord. Ready the way, ready the way, ready the way of the Lord. And so together we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And in this first decade of our chaplet today, let's pray that we allow God to be more in our hearts. In the words of John the Baptist, I must decrease so that Christ may increase. Lord, become more in us. Help us this week to let you be all that you desire to be in our hearts and in our lives. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 
Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. And in the second decade of our chaplet, we pray for forgiveness. We ask for God's forgiveness for all the ways that we have not been who he created us to be. But we also pray for the courage and the wisdom and the strength to forgive others and to seek forgiveness. The most dangerous thing we pray, any one of us, is the words of the Our Father when we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We're praying, Father, forgive me in the same measure that I forgive others. And so, Lord, this Holy Week, help us to see with mercy and through your eyes of mercy, everyone in our lives, give us the courage and the strength to ask forgiveness and to extend the very forgiveness that we seek to others. And together we pray. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us, and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. In this third decade of our chaplet today, let's just pause for a moment and offer our own intentions for the prayers of our hearts, for those things that we speak out loud right now. We have a God of mercy and a God of grace Lord, we not only hope for your miracles, but we count on them and we trust in them. For these prayers that we offer you now. In a special way, we pray for all those for whom we've said we would pray, for all those who have no one to pray for them. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole.
For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the world. In this fourth decade of the chaplet today, we pray for healing, spiritual, emotional, and physical. Our God is a God of healing. He healed with just the touch of the hem of his garment. He raised from the dead. He calls us to new life. We pray especially for those battling physical ailments, for those battling cancer, COVID, any disease or injury. We pray for those needing conversion of heart, healing of their emotions. Lord, you know everything in our lives. We count on your mercy. We trust in your grace. Lord, we surrender everything that we are to you. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Jude, pray for us. St. John Paul II, pray for us. Lord, we trust in you. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity, of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. And on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us And on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us And on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole 
world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. And in this final decade of our chaplet today, we thank God ahead of time. We thank God for his mercy, his grace, for his new life in our hearts and in our lives. In the words of Blessed Solanus Casey, do not allow fear or worry, which is the most insidious enemy of our faith, to interfere with our confidence in God. But thank him ahead of time for his answer to our prayers, the prayers of our hearts. He knows all this before we speak them. Lord, we trust in you. We surrender to you. Jesus, we trust in you. Thank you for all that you are. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins And those of the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world For the sake of his sorrowful passion Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. pray. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God In Holy Week, the church truly gives us the extraordinary opportunity to go on a journey, the journey of life and death and resurrection. It's the story of Jesus, but truthfully, we know the end of Jesus' story. It's really our story. It's the story of our willingness to lay down all that we are and hand it to the Lord, to let Jesus carry our crosses with us so that we rise with him. It's a story of hope and faith. It's the greatest story ever told, and we can seize the day. Whether you had a great Lent or a horrible Lent, you can seize the day. We can take this week, and we can recognize that we are created to be children of God. And even in our toughest times, uh, he's there. That's I love the chorus of the song. I just end with it. Uh, I'll sing the third verse because it speaks of not everyone comes perfect. We think we have to come perfect to the Lord. Don't come perfect. Come as you are. He's a healer. And in the words of St. Therese, God's love is like water. It flows to the lowest place. He wants to go where we need him most. And he wants to heal the things that we need healing the most. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. Darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, running after me Your goodness is running after, running after me With my life laid down, I surrender now Give you everything Your goodness is running after Running after me All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God three time let's pray Jesus I trust in you 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 Amen This production is only made possible because of the generous support of Icon Ministry partners and donors. Please go to iconministry.com forward slash support to make a donation. Icon Ministry wants to reach out to the Alpha Generation. Introducing MetaSaint, a revolutionary project where the hope and love of Christ meet the Metaverse generation. Did you know that the Roblox platform transcends mere gaming? It's a bustling digital universe with over 70 million users a day. This is an incredible opportunity to share the gospel with young people. Do your children or grandchildren play Roblox? Tell them to start playing MetaSaint, where they will have an interactive experience of the gospel like never before. As we pioneer this exciting new frontier of connection and community, we invite you to help us in this groundbreaking mission, our biggest project yet, to ensure the digital spaces can become a place where all can encounter the transformative power of Christ. Together, let's bring the gospel to the metaverse. 
Visit metasaint.com to learn more.